Hello everyone, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy. A cousin Russ and I are here to talk with you about room layout if your society is planning to host hybrid meetings where some of your attendees are in the normal meeting room with you and uh, some are attending virtually. And uh, let's review what we have been doing. This puts this in the context of the other presentations. Your society leadership needed to decide about meetings or webinar technology. Zoom offers both. Your society leadership needs to decide if you want to find speakers that will permit you to record or if you can handle it if they do not wish you to record or may permit you to record if you put something behind a paywall. We talked about contracts, essential elements of the contracts, especially with an eye to copyright issues that could cause you, the host, getting zapped by Facebook or YouTube and no longer able to use those outlets for a period of 60 to 90 days. Talked about speaker contracts and how very little equipment is really needed. Uh, it's no more difficult than having one member of your society bring his or her laptop, hook it up to either the meeting room um, computer projector or your society's computer projector, and having an external webcam to uh, use on a tripod. Uh, okay, so room layout. Okay, and we have mentioned we prefer, and this is really important to us, it's why it's in every single one of our videos. We would prefer that your society members attend using a computer, although they can be on um, you know, a smartphone or a tablet. It's just that your members are gonna complain if they can't see that slide, the map on a slide something like that. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so we're going to talk about roles people play. You normally have the in-person facilitator. It could be the vice president, that's the program chair that, that welcomes everybody, the, you know, the treasurer gives the treasury report. But this person facilitates a speaker that might be coming, they meet them at the door, they make sure they have a glass of water on that little shelf in the podium. Um, we're used to doing that in a normal meeting room setup. But what we're gonna talk about in this session is a virtual producer, the role that a virtual producer plays. That's the person that brings the laptop, plugs in the ethernet cable for wired internet, plugs in the um, HDMI cable to the laptop and turns on the projector. Um, okay, now this is kind of a, a brief glimpse of what we're going to show you with real life pictures with Megan Schmolenak as a virtual presenter. Um, so it's a hybrid meeting because she's attending virtually and other people are in the normal meeting room. So the person here is the meeting facilitator. Who This is the podium. Uh, this, these could be the laptop that hooks to the projector that's projecting to the screen. Do you like my little inverted triangle there cousin Russ <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for projecting <laughs> here's your uh, in-person audience on both the Windows 10 or Mac that computer projector pr projector up here on the screen that becomes essentially a second monitor so on the uh, laptop monitor an in-person presenter could be looking at her PowerPoint presenter view, but what everyone else sees, hybrid, meaning in-person or virtual, they can see what's being projected on the screen. Okay, um, now let's go to the next slide and we'll compare this. So 
an in-person facilitator for all these years of your society meetings already has been doing things like doing um you know arranging the chairs in the room and things like that seeing that these things are provided for they are the ones that this is the person that is going to um log into zoom do the dry run the week before they may have to be invited up on the panel they need to adjust where the webcam is once you've done this once it's replicatable and that person should train somebody else immediately shouldn't they russ absolutely um, we don't want to be sick and have a meeting be canceled for that reason so <clears throat> You still need that in-person facilitator because they're the um, eyes on your in-person in the meeting room audience, and they can see if the air, the, the air conditioning is too cold or too hot, if the lighting is bad for people's bifocals, um, if somebody sat in the um, the hot seat, which is which is um, up toward the front. That's the one we reserve for the Q&A toward the end, whatever your setup is. Um, but the virtual producer, and it could be your presenter if it was me or cousin Russ, we are the ones that initiate the Zoom event. Okay, let's pretend I'm not the presenter. And cousin Russ is. I'm here in Utah. I need to know the time zone differences for where your society meets, where Russ is, and where I am. Um, I may be the one that then um, initiates the Zoom event. This could be a society member. Um, and I recommend that when you set up that Zoom account, which we're going to talk about at the very end, one of our very last sessions, that you create a Gmail account just for your society's virtual presenters. So that you're, you're, um, it's not on anyone else's account. Um, I've heard uh, in the case of, of uh, Mr. Mertz Church, everything is on an individual's YouTube channel, not on the church's YouTube channel. Shouldn't be on his personal, it should be on the YouTube channel uh, and on an email associated just with the society and both the president and the secretary need to know that password. Um, yeah. And it is the virtual producer that calls that actually starts the broadcast, just like the in person facilitator will welcome everybody to the meeting. And today we're going to have a special presentation. It's going to be Cousin Russ. He's going to talk about Family Tree Maker. And because we know that we're going to have a lengthy business meeting, we're going to meet with Cousin Russ first. And following his remarks, he must, he has other obligations. He'll leave and then we'll go forward with our business meeting. So you see how you've got two roles here. One person that's the the normal person that handles the welcoming. Sometimes it's the president. Um, <laughs> okay, the virtual producer hits that start broadcast button if it's a webinar or admits people from the waiting room if it's a Zoom meeting. And they can control the camera view now. Um, one of the options available to me tonight in this presentation as we're recording it is to force you all to look at things from the host point of view. Uh, it's one of the options now in Zoom. So we've got those two roles and I'm the green is the one we're very familiar with. The red is a new thing. That's my color coding. Now let's look at it a little bit differently in this list. Okay, in your normal meeting setup, you have advertising. Your in-person facilitator and your virtual facilitator people are not doing public relations social media. That's not their job. Theirs is to do work in the meeting itself. Um, you check that the um, 
You can get power to the podium to plug in the, the laptop. We once had a cable go, you know, an electrical cord go wrong, cousin or us. Um, you may have a computer and a projector that's part of your society's own tech closet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you see that the pro projection screen is pulled down. You do the testing one, two, three on the mic in the room, uh, et cetera. And you, and you have already in advance worked to know that there is wired internet. And so I put those uh, the in-person facilitator for your hybrid meeting and your virtual producer um, juxtaposed with a normal meeting room setup. It doesn't matter if you have 10 people or 100 people in that room. Those are the roles people play. Now here we're getting to um, equipment again. I have a fluting mic here, Cousin Russ. Uh, not every facility has a handheld mic. I usually request that when I would go and do in-person uh, meetings because I like to go around the room and and interview somebody as part of a presentation uh, but again it's the podium a mic that may be for the meeting room and you know now about the lapel mic from our previous equipment recording sometimes a computer has to be here because there's a very short cable between that and the projector and it won't reach to the podium this has happened to me at Roots Tech, Cousin Russ. You and I have been up on a stage behind a podium, and I had to use my remote clicker, which every presenter has that. But a society could also have that if you're going to have an in-person speaker. Now, <laughs> it's been so bad, Cousin Russ, <laughs> that when I spoke for Roger Moffat's group, we could not get sound to work at all. So he literally called me on the phone as a presenter. They could see my slides just fine. And he held his cell phone up against the microphone in that meeting room. It was, it worked. It worked. <laughs> you just never know. Um, yeah. Uh, other people have relied totally on their C920. In fact, lately in my craft room where I do some recording, I've relied on that. For instance, last week, the little redheaded girl came to the studio and we recorded a, two videos together and that's the microphone we use, but it was also only about a foot from our our faces just above our workspace. Okay here's the actual picture. There's our meeting facilitator she happens to have a wired mic doesn't she. Yep, she does. She's, she's clearly got the agenda and. She's got the bio of the presenter. That's normal, normal meeting stuff. And Megan Schmolenak is on standby, ready to present. And this is being projected, I think. Russ, didn't you take these pictures? I did, yep. So was the projector up here in the ceiling out of view? Yes, it was, yes. Okay, there's a laptop here and there's a webcam here. And because of that, Megan can see through the webcam as it looks out over the uh, audience in the room. Remember, this is just as easy as taking a laptop with an external webcam. Oh, I have a little circle to highlight it there. We love it. Now that camera was so that she could see the audience. So yep. I had that camera facing the audience and she you can see it where the circle on the right but she could see it as as big as she wanted to that's how old Mert's able to say i see the lady in the red shirt waving at the back she has a question come on up front near the mic so that i can hear your question and answer it people just love when you do that all right so that whole concept here of just a laptop and an external webcam that you can turn the other way so that um, Megan can see who's in the room, whoever your presenter is. After I did this one, I put that webcam on a tripod 
white where the brown arrow is pointing to so I could move it because later on somebody would come up to ask, ask a question up to the mm -hmm. mic that's on the right mm -hmm. so I could pan the, the camera to so that the speaker could see. In fact, I think the speaker was Melissa, the archive <laughs> lady, and uh, so that she could see the person who was asking the question. Totally, totally cool. So you went from the whole room view overview to focusing in on the one person asking the question. I think that that screen is what, 12 by 12? That's a pull down screen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So webcam. So remote speaker can view the attendees and microphone to the room sound system and the web how did you get how did megan hear what was going on oh she could hear it through the 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 webcam picking it up because it's the c920 that has both the webcam and the microphone okay okay we got it <laughs> all right this is a different view so tell me about this russ yeah, I just walked around behind the laptop and uh, the speaker, the host for the meeting is on the left and the person came up to ask a question was on the right and she had a wired mic that was into the sound system. I can see Megan uh, and I am present, I am projecting from my laptop onto the big screen. Mm hmm. Okay. And then Right now we're seeing uh, Megan Schmolenak, but as soon as she sh shares her screen, what you would see here and is projected up on the screen would be her PowerPoint presentation. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right, and there we go again. All right, so I think that the room layout's pretty simple, Russ. People think it's going to take tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's very easy. I was once invited to interview people at the International Jewish Genealogical Society's annual conference when it was held in Salt Lake City the last time. They just wanted me to interview the SIG leaders. I had a cell phone that I attached a handheld mic like the lady was holding in your meeting room and I would just ask the question and put the mic over here like I was a remote TV reporter a man on the street interview kind of thing. And very successful it's amazing that that technology works. So when next we meet we'll speak about social media and our last segment part of the hybrid society meetings. Um, um, group of um, advice will be on specifically how to set up your zoom account there's some very specific things like to turn on closed captioning it's got to be turned on in your zoom settings for the whole account before you get into a meeting or or a webinar then you have to turn it on for that specific meeting or webinar <sighs> so many things to talk about cousin russ all right, well, folks, there's nothing left to say, but I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy. Happy family tree climbing, everybody. That's a wrap. <laughs>